everyone, I'm Erin and this is the Cardboard Republic. We are coming to you this week with our haul video for February. We are going to start off with the heftiest game that we got in February, and also probably in the past, like, two years. The Gallerist! It's a big one. So, The Gallerist is all about building up your art gallery. It's a pretty heavy Euro game, and I don't just mean that as a play on how heavy this box is right now, but it has a lot of pieces. And it's also generated a lot of buzz. People are really liking this game, and I haven't had a chance to play yet, so I'm really excited. The next time I have a, like, four-hour game night with nothing else to play, oh god. <laughs> okay, no, it'll be fine. So while I recover from that, let's move on to a couple smaller games. These should be a little easier to get into my average game night. First up, we have Gem Packed Cards. It's a very light game, it's kind of a matching sort of thing, and it feels and plays a lot like a mobile app. It has the same sort of cutesy little art style, and it's just, it's, it's cute. We also got a copy of Ninja Camp. This is another really cute game. You are all little animals training to be ninjas, and one of your exercises is you have to face off on the battlefield. The catch is that the battlefield is a grid of cards in front of you, and as you move around this field, cards are removed from play. So the the grounds are changing, and you need to kind of make sure that you can get to where you want to go. It's a little bit like Forbidden Island in that respect. You know, you're always having to think a few steps ahead to make sure that you're not taking away a card that you're going to need then. And then we have the siblings trouble. I actually didn't have a chance to play this when we previewed it, but Ryan did, and his game, he said, got very dark very quickly. But in general, if you play with probably people who aren't our friends, it's a light, family-friendly game that's kind of designed to help you get your kids into storytelling games and RPGs. If you play with a bunch of, like, 30-year-old dudes, all bets are off. So I've recovered from holding the gallerist for that long, and now I'm ready to go back to some normal weight games. We have Cult Express. I'm really excited for this one because it's about robbing a train, which is awesome. What's even better, though, is that the train you're robbing in the game, like, you actually set up a 3D train and rob it in the game. I don't even care about anything else. Like, that's really, really cool. Next up, we have Loop Inc. This is another time travel game. So the catch in this one is that you are working for a time travel agency, leading tours into the past. But your agency has like zero budget and they don't really care. You have to try to get further and further into the past with a smaller and smaller amount of time to do so by upgrading your ship. Unfortunately, because, again, no budget, you're trying to cram all this into, like, one day, so you're also, like, reliving the same day over and over again. It's a little confusing, but it's a really cute game, so I'm excited to try the full copy. We, um, previewed this one way back, and it's always fun to see, like, the changes that happen from the time that we preview it, when it's almost ready for production, but maybe not quite, to now, where it's, like, really out on game store shelves. And then we have Discoveries. This is a, another game based on Lewis and Clark, not unlike the Lewis and Clark board game. The difference is this one uses dice, and in the game you'll be using dice for all sorts of explorery, frontiersy things, like fording rivers, I guess, or shooting oxen, or getting dysentery. I don't know. Um, I've never played this, I haven't yet at least, but I have played a lot of Oregon Trail, and Pretty much all of my knowledge of the Wild West comes from that. I always think that Dominion has finally released its final expansion and then another one comes out and I really should be paying more attention, but this one surprised me. Dominion Adventures is an expansion to Dominion, clearly. The whole theme of this one is that you're going on adventures, clearly. Mechanically, what it does differently is you have these expeditions that you're trying to work towards over the course of the game. That's very new. 
It's also bringing back duration cards. So those we first saw in the Seaside expansion way, way back in the day. And those are the cards that stay out in front of you from turn to turn. Players really liked them and they didn't make any other appearances. So I am stoked that they're back. Finally, our last game, we have Champions of Midgard. This is a worker placement game. It's relatively light. Think Lords of Waterdeep, but Vikings. So you are building a Viking village and doing all sorts of Viking things like pillaging and building longboats and going exploring and I don't know, Viking things. Vikings. Vikings. So that was our February haul. Those are all of the games that we got in in February. What was really cool about that was so many of those games are ones we had previewed when they were in earlier stages of production. And I love seeing how nice and shiny and polished they get over the course of being actually published. And then you see them on the game store shelves and you're like, I knew you before you were cool. Anyway, that's February for us. If you liked what you saw, and I hope that you did, subscribe and hit like down below. Feel free to leave a comment letting us know any games that you got in in February, and we will see you again soon. Bye! Just when you thought it was done! And by done, I mean Dominion, not this video. <laughs> I caught it. I remember this now. I remember Florst. <laughs> Guys, they didn't even try. Today is your turn to write history. Create packs of the American Indian tribes and explore new territories. Place your dice wisely or attempt to use other players' dice. That's their description of the game. <laughs>